Hi iTree users, this is Jason and this will be a quick introduction into how to set up the plot-based sampling project in iTree Eco version 6. So anytime you're creating a new project, the first thing you need to do is go to the file menu and select new project. As I said, we'll be doing a sample project rather than a complete inventory. So we'll go ahead and select plot sample and hit OK. We need to give our saved project a name and for this example I'm going to go ahead and use the city of Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll go ahead and start adding in some of the options for our project. So we need to give our project a name and a series and a series year. And I'll go with 2016. Then we need to go ahead and select our location data. Our location will go with the United States. We'll select the state of Tennessee and Knox County. Knoxville. And you want to make sure you check this is the study urban area. If your study is indeed urban, you want to make sure you check that so you can get accurate results. Uh, then new for iTree Eco 2016, we can select our weather year. I'm going to go ahead with 2013 for both the weather year and the pollution year. And those two years need to match. Um, and then I'll hit show map to get our map of the available weather stations. If a station you want isn't available or doesn't show up and you think it should be there, you can go ahead and change your weather year because the same stations aren't available for all years. So we'll go ahead and up to this point everything is the same for both complete inventory and plot based sample projects. When we jump over to the data collection options you'll notice we have plot information options and we have tree information options. So we'll go ahead and select our units as English and you can see up here there's some fields that must be collected there's some fields that are highly recommended and some that you don't need to collect. I'm going to go ahead with all the highly recommended, but at this point you should really take your time deciding what variables you want to collect, which ones are specifically useful for your project, especially among the optional or these custom fields, and which ones will give you the results you want. Uh, if, for example, you don't collect something like total tree height, the model will go ahead and estimate the height of your trees, uh, but if you have trees that differ from typical trees of that species and that DBH, maybe a tree that's been topped, well that estimated height isn't going to accurately reflect those measurements. Uh, so there is a trade-off between uh, spending time taking measurements and the accuracy of the results you get. There's a lot more information about the exact data collection options. Some of it's over here in the help panel, some is down here at the bottom of the screen, and I'll point to some additional resources uh, once we get our projects set up. So we'll go ahead and hit OK after data collection options. You'll see we get one more notice about which results will be available given our exact data collection options. So if one of these reports you really wanted and isn't available, you go ahead and hit cancel, go back and change those options. So once we hit OK, iTree Eco will set up our project in the background. But there are a few more details that we need to get to for this plot-based sample project before getting out into the field and collecting data. So we'll go back to the project configuration tab and you can always change your project definition. You want to be a little careful with that because if you already have data entered you can uncheck some of those fields uh, and possibly lose some data. You can see the land use categories and you can customize your condition and dieback categories as well. But the most important thing with this project is we have to go to this project and strata area. So if we just had one strata or one area, if we were interested in say the whole city, we would just need, want to change our description here to say uh, perhaps our city name. We would want to make sure we accurately enter the area. For a sample project, it's going to expand whatever we measure on our sampled plots to be an estimate for the whole city. So if we get an incorrect area there, uh, we're going to get an incorrect expansion and you're going to get inaccurate results. For this project, I want to go ahead and show you how to do a stratified sample. So with that, we have to set up a couple different zones. Uh, that we're interested in. So in this case I'm going to go ahead and set up a zone of uh, downtown and again you would want to accurately get the area of this uh, perhaps using GIS or some other resources. Then I'm going to go ahead and do other that will cover most of the rest of the city and for that we'll go ahead and enter something like 50,005 acres. And lastly, in this case, maybe they're interested in knowing uh, what the trees are on their parks and what 
ecosystem services those park trees are providing. So we'll go ahead and enter a parks category and we'll give it an area of about 10,005 acres. So from there our strata are set up. Uh, the advantages of doing strata here or zones is that you can then get results by these strata or zones. So we would know exactly what's going on in parks relative to downtown, relative to the rest of the city. And you can also get more accurate estimates over the whole city. From there, the last step in setting this up is to define our actual plots that we're going to be measuring and get those loaded into the system. There are a few different methods to do this, and we have some additional documentation that walks through these methods. But we'll go with the simplest one for today, user-defined. So user-defined, I just need to tell it how many plots I want in each one of these strata or zones. So in this case, I'm just going to add 20 to downtown, 150 to other, and we'll do 30 in the parks. And those are just pretty much proportional to those uh, relative areas. Typically, we recommend that you do at least 200 plots, and that's going to give you a standard error of about 10% on your citywide estimate of the number of trees. If you're interested in other variables or drilling down into these individual strata, individual species, individual diameter classes, you may need a more intensive sample. So from there, we can hit OK. And you can see 200 plots have been added to our project. And we can just verify that if we go to the Data tab and click on Plots. You can see all of our downtown plots are there. All of our other and park plots are there as well. So we're at this point, we're ready to collect data, get it entered in here, or use the mobile data collection. So if you're interested in additional resources on some of these topics or to get to next steps in completing your iTree Eco project, you should check out our resources on the website. So under the resources tab on the website, if you have manuals and workbooks, we have a number of new guides for iTree Eco version 6, including some about stratification, data limitations, and other topics. We have additional resources in our archives and also the videos if you want to look at additional videos under that resources tab. And in the archives there, you'll see more detailed information about the types of data that are available, the types of models used in iTree Eco version 6. So that's a very quick introduction to how to create a sample project in iTree Eco version 6.